Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasari Gauda Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Everyone refreshed did their yoga exercises, got their, got their, uh, what they call the, uh, the chakras in line now? Okay, <laughs> okay. Ready for another uh, spiritual, philosophical uh, attack? <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> but this is a culmination. This verse, number, verse number eight is... The culmination of the first seven verses, and we'll we we'll can chant it. And I will do it together like we did earlier. I'll read it and then you can follow. Tanama rupa charita sukirtananu. Smritiyo kramena rasamanasi niyojya. Tishtan vajaitan anuragi janugami Kalam nayet akilam it upadesha sharam Translation The essence of all advice is that one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours a day in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities, and eternal pastimes, thereby gradually engaging one's tongue and mind. In this way, one should reside in Vraj Goloka Vrindavan and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees. One should follow in the footsteps of the Lord's beloved devotees who are deeply attached to his devotional service. Please repeat, the essence of all advice is that one should utilize one's full time, 24 hours a day, in nicely chanting and remembering the Lord's divine name, transcendental form, qualities, and eternal pastimes thereby engaging one's tongue and mind, I want to say, thereby gradually engaging one's tongue and mind. In this way, one should reside in Vraj, Goloka Vrindavan Dham, and serve Krishna under the guidance of devotees. One should follow in the footsteps of the Lord's beloved devotees who are deeply attached to his devotional service. Mm. So this verse is considered to be on the platform of attachment to Krishna or Ashakti. And as the first seven verses deal with various categories of stages of bhakti. This is verse number eight, Ashakti. Uh, verse seven included bhajana kriya and arta nivritti nishta and ruchi. We just heard that from Bhutta Bhavana. How to actually begin to get a taste for chanting the holy names of the Lord. Now the taste has developed and now here's how you utilize your time. <laughs> so Prabhupada explains that you know, one should engage the mind and the tongue, Rupa Goswami, and train these two facilities of our material body to focus on remembering Krishna and chanting his holy name all the time. <laughs> And it says here, this is the essence of all advice. In other words, the goal 
of Krishna consciousness is being explained in this verse. Hmm. To come to the stage through the gradual stages of practicing bhakti, from the very beginning stages of, you know, sadhu sangha and pra practicing devotional service, rules and regulations, uh, worshiping the Lord, doing one's prescribed duty, and then actually through that process, practicing the chanting of the holy names. As one's avidya, as we heard, ignorance is destroyed, through the chanting of a holy name, the sweet taste develops. Now here's, the sweet taste is assumed in this verse. We've got the sweet taste. So now as that taste increases, one increases that, accelerates that taste by constantly remembering Krishna by chanting 24 hours a day. So this is the essence of all advice. I did a little research just to find out how many times Prabhupada mentioned in his speeches and his hilarious lectures and his writings and in just conversations in general, how many times did he mention that we should chant Hare Krishna 24 hours a day? I found, I'm not done researching, I found at least 40, 50 or 60 different times that Prabhupada said this. Really, it's the essence of Krishna consciousness. One should always remember Krishna. Now here it mentions his names, his forms, his qualities, his pastimes. In the conditioned state, these things seem to be difficult, strange, very hard to do, even if we have a little tendency. The mind is always restless and always wants to do something different. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati used to say, your mind is a non-devotee. <laughs> that was his statement. It, a non-devotee means it always wants to do something more different than you want to do, and you are the soul. <laughs> So to train the mind to become a devotee means to practice giving that mind this formula. As it mentions in the previous verse, one should gradually practice carefully chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Sometimes when devotees ask me, you know, how do I get the taste for chanting? I say, just sit down, push everything else aside. Find a nice place free from the distractions and just carefully chant and, do, and just continue to do that. And you'll gradually, we find that if by doing that, the taste starts to develop like that. It takes a little bit of arrangement and it takes a little determination, a lot of determination. But because Krishna's name is very sweet and Krishna is very merciful in giving that sweetness through his name, if we practice, and this is also mentioned in various prayers, that careful chanting of the holy name gradually, that, that sweet taste awakens. So we see in our Krishna consciousness society, at least within the last 10 or 15 years, there's been an a outburst of focusing on the holy name. His Holiness Sachinandana Maharaj is more or less the, what's the word, vanguard. <laughs> vanguard means one who leads the charge. In bringing about this focus on chanting of the holy name and the philosophy that centers around this chanting. And many have followed in his footsteps to establish the same thing he did, and that is to create an environment where we just chant the holy names, and we just focus on Krishna's name. And we see when we do that, that uh, naturally, because of the energy all being focused, and everyone is enthusiastic to get, receive them the mercy, so many wonderful things happen. When devotees come back from a Japa, Japa retreat or a Kirtan Mela, there's, there's such inspiration, there's such spiritual energy that exudes, that exudes from that person's body. So we practice that. Now some temples in, around the world put more emphasis on doing things. Other temples put more emphasis on chanting. So we find that within our society there's a kind of a variety where the emphasis is on. But here the goal is mentioned. 
The goal is to come to that stage of developing that taste for chanting the holy names by constantly chanting the holy names of the Lord. So we can do it in two ways. We can create environments where we absorb ourselves in that, but we can also do that from day to day by reminding ourselves that I should be remembering Krishna right now. We check our mind. What is my mind thinking of? Is it thinking of Krishna or is it not? So you observe your mind. If it's not thinking of Krishna, then you'd say, oh, okay, I'll think of Krishna or I'll chant Krishna's name. You practice doing that over and over again and your mind finally gets the idea. And then you start remembering Krishna more and more. Uh, one time when someone asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, are you always chanting Hare Krishna? <laughs> they, had, they did, they, it was a very polite way they did it, and Prabhupada welcomed the question. And Prabhupada said, come and put your ear on my back. So they put their ear on their back and they could hear Prabhupada and the Maha Mantra going on. Prabhupada, in his heart, the mantra is going on constantly. And this is a this is a nitya city. The, the holy name, they're doing other things, but inside the holy name is going on constantly. They're never disconnected from that transcendental sound vibration. They're never disconnected from Krishna at any time, 24 hours a day. So this is available. It's not only available, it's recommended that we follow, get to this stage of spirituality practicing. So here it says that there are three stages. One is called Shravanam Dasya. So one of the reasons we had this retreat this weekend was to create this Shravanam Dasya, an atmosphere of constantly hearing philosophical teachings centered around you know, the process of pure, of pure devotional service. As that hearing come, becomes concentrated then we desire to increase that hearing even more and more because a sweet taste develops by concentration. <laughs> this is the nature of spirit. The nature of matter is that it uh, somehow interferes with our natural spiritual consciousness. But how to bring it back is to just emphasize more and more of the spiritual activity. Therefore, we see, I remember on one Japa retreat, this was in 2008 in New York, we went to this place in upstate New York. Of course, Sachinandana Maharaj was there and it was for a week. We spent a week there, uh, five days. There was actually two sessions. One group came for five days and then there was a break for one day and another group came for five days. I came in the second group. And uh, five days of just discussing and chanting the holy names. And two days was 64 japa days, the 64 rounds we were supposed to chant. On that day, no talking. You're not allowed to, in the morning we had our class, and then the rest of the day is just japa. And then at the evening, we would discuss some of our realizations and experiences during that japa session. And then everyone would speak something. And many of the devotees would say, you know, when I got to my 40th round, then all of a sudden I, I felt spontaneously, you know, attracted. Or I got to my 50th round. Everyone had that experience that at one point in the higher numbers, the, the name just all of a sudden just came and it became just like natural. Like it was, it was just the name was resonating regularly. It wasn't even much effort anymore. One devotee did 128 rounds that day, 64 twice, <laughs> because he couldn't stop. <laughs> I got to 73 and then we ran out of time, <laughs> so that was my experience. So it, it's like that. The holy name is sweet, but you got to keep tasting it, tasting it. Prabhupada gave us 16 rounds, but 16 rounds was just to get you going. 16 rounds is a way to somehow or other fix your, your vow of numerical, your, your, your numerical vow, so you'll do something. But 
Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, when you chant regularly every day, then you come to the point of chanting always. We ask that, that's the question. How do you get to the point of always chanting? Is that you set a numerical vow every day and you follow that. But if you stick to your numerical vow as the only thing you do, you're missing the whole point of, of, of chanting or Krishna consciousness. It's just, 16 rounds is the minimum. It's not maximum. <laughs> it's just to get you going. When Prabhupada started the movement back in the late 60s, when devotees were very new, he said 64 rounds. That's what he said, 64 rounds a day. And the devotees said, uh, Swamiji, he was known as Swamiji in those days, not Prabhupada. It's impossible, we can't do that, we got other things to do. And it was Mukunda Maharaj who was talking to Prabhupada. And finally, Prabhupada said, all right, 32. And then, uh, you know, the discussion went on, and finally Prabhupada said, 16 and no less. <laughs> so 16 is the concession, in one sense, or a standard where you can work your way up. It's not like you go down. <laughs> I start with 16 and I go down. <laughs> or I get to 16 and I stop there. No, because the process is satatam kirtayanto mam. Coming to the platform of, and this is what this verse is all about, is that the essence of all advice is to constantly be absorbed in hearing and chanting the name, form, qualities, and transcendental activities of the Lord. Because each of these four categories are all transcendental and they're all absolute. There's no difference between Krishna's name and Krishna's qualities. There's no difference between Krishna's form and Krishna's name. There's no difference between Krishna's pastimes and Krishna's qualities. The thing is, there's a succession that's described by the Acharyas that to be absorbed in Krishna's pastimes, you have to go through the stage of becoming absorbed in his name, and then you get to his forms, and then you get to his qualities, and then the pastimes is the final stage of spiritual attainment where one is constantly absorbed in experiencing and even participating in Krishna's pastimes while in this particular body. There's one great, you know, one uh, of the Goswamis, Raghunath Das Goswami. He wrote this one beautiful treatise, um, not treatise, but uh, glorification of his relationship with Srimati Radharani in the spiritual world. He, know, he, he understood who he was. He's Rati Manjari. And he's an old man sitting on the banks of Radhakund. And he's going into transcendental ecstasy. As he goes into ecstasy, he leaves his external environment and he goes into his eternal relationship with Radharani in his consciousness. There he exists and there he sees himself as the assistant of Sri Rati Radharani and what he's doing in that service to her. And then sometimes he would come back to external consciousness and then he just realized he's just an old man on the bank of the Ganges, uh, on, the, on the bank of Radha Kund, and then he would start crying again and go, and it's just like, he would be in ecstasy of his actual identity like that. So these were the, this is the highest stage of attainment where one leaves this material realm and goes into the pure consciousness of one's identity in the spiritual world. So this verse is actually saying that one should train the mind to constantly hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And then it also says one should live in Sri Vrindavan Dham, right? Okay, so that's controversial, right? Does that mean we take all the devotees out of the temples and go to Vrindavan and just sit there on the banks of, you know, Radha Kund and just chant Hare Krishna? Not possible. No, but these are only for the highest stage of attainment. But there's two meanings to this principle of, of residing in Vrindavan. If one is qualified, then they can physically go to Sri Vrindavan Dham. That means that one has Vrindavan consciousness. 
because when the consciousness becomes Vrindavan, that means when the consciousness is fully absorbed in loving devotional service to Krishna 24 hours a day, you have reached the stage of Vrindavan. So when you actually attain that stage, going to Vrindavan is just the consummation of that consciousness. But Prabhupada explains that it's not in, in our beginning stages, we can also practice going to Vrindavan or developing the Vrindavan consciousness by following the principles of Rupa Goswami and his teachings. How to develop that mood of Vrindavan. What is the mood of Vrindavan? The mood of Vrindavan is unalloyed, pure, loving service to Krishna. And one can practice that now. <laughs> What is that practice that one absorbs themselves in service to the Lord and becomes attached to Krishna? So here, this verse says, practice the process of hearing. Hear more and more and more. You know, one thing good about this age we live in, one thing, is that it's technologically very advanced. Now, techno technology has a, it's like a double-edged sword. It can do some great, wonderful services to people's lives, or it can destroy the world. <laughs> Most people who are in control of technology, they are duskritina. That means they're intelligent, but they have bad intentions. So therefore, they use using technology in an exploitive and destructive way. But we take technology, and what do we do with it? We use it in Krishna's service. So devotees have opportunities to always hear simply by the process of technology, right? We can always, we have iPods, like po, what is it, Pods, Pads, I'm not sure, it was one, of, one of the things. But you can plug in, you can tune in, turn on, and drop out, right? <laughs> that, was, that was the statement in the old days. <laughs> You tune in, you know, I, I travel on planes, I just, boom, you know, I'm not on the plane anymore. <laughs> you know, you can sit eight hours on the plane, you just listen to Prabhupada, you can hear, you know, bhajans, kirtans, you know. So the technological age, and devotees take the advantage of that and just connect to the sound vibrations of, of Prabhupada's kata or any spiritual discussions or kirtans so it's wonderful we can and we can use this more and more otherwise if we allow our minds to just to do whatever it wants it will always go to some place it's not supposed to go <laughs> it's just the way it is the the mind has a certain pattern it follows if you think of something that thought will give you an indication of something else and that something else will give you an indication of something else right just like you're chanting japa and you're sitting here and you're chanting japa and you see someone come in and they have a blue sari on so you think oh blue sari yeah she wore it yesterday same one Okay, blue sari. Yeah, actually, I saw that sari when I was in Loi Bizarre. Yeah, that's right. It's the same one. It looks very nice. And yeah, when I was in Loi Bizarre, I met this guy. Yeah, and he actually sold me these jewelry. And then when I was in, and then all of a sudden you're in Loi Bizarre and you're just, you know, you're bargaining about jewelry. And then you talk, then you remember you met a friend who was there also, and then you remember the discussion. So it started by looking at the blue sari, and pretty soon you, you had a mind, <laughs> makes sense? It happens all the time. As soon as we connect one thing, it connects to something else, and pretty soon we're in, you know, some other loka. <laughs> so that's the nature of the mind. So therefore, to keep that mind from just going all over the place, one has to practice this is called a Shravanam Dasya. Shravanam Dasya is to practice the process of hearing always. And Shravanam Dasya leads to Varnam Dasya. Varna Dasya means that when one practices hearing more and more, one gets attached to hearing. One develops an attachment for hearing. 
Sukadev Goswami spoke Srimad Bhagavatam to Maharaj Pariksit. Maharaj Pariksit was so absorbed in, in hearing, he forgot to eat, he forgot to sleep, he forgot to do anything else, but he simply was absorbed in the process of hearing. So that, because once one gets a taste, and that taste is there, the taste is inside, the soul has a natural inclination to, of a sweet taste to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. That's the nature. But this concentrated process of bringing that external energy in, in the form of chanting and hearing, awakens that internal mood. And then when they connect, that internal mood just starts to develop. And then your consciousness becomes purified. And then constantly you can remember Krishna or you chant Krishna's name like that. Have you ever, we've all had an experience, right? We went to a kirtan mailer. And the last kirtan at the night was like five hours long. And then you went to sleep, and you, when you went to lay down, you sleep, the kirtan's still going in your mind, right? And then you get up the next morning, and it's still going. <laughs> and you're thinking, wow, can I always, I wish I could always be like this. You know? It's wonderful. That's Krishna consciousness. You've got to taste what it's like. That's the actual, and that's what we're looking for. So it, it takes that kind of concentrated spiritual hearing process, and then when attachment develops, the next stage is called Shmarnam Vastya. That means one starts to remember Krishna. And then that Smarnam Vastya, as uh, Prabhupada mentions in this particular stage, purport, he says there's five stages of remembrances. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah. When meditation expands, it becomes, it's called anu, anushmiti, that means uninterrupted and unceasing anushmiti. One enters into the stage of samadhi. Oh, that's the final one. Okay, so there's five stages. Let me see if I can find it here in this. Shravanam leads to, the, okay, varanam. One, uh, Recollection is the first stage, the remembering things, just remembering Krishna. Absorption, when that recollection becomes intensified, one becomes absorbed in remembering Krishna. And then meditation, then meditation means an extended period of time where that absorption is, is longer. Meditation lasts a longer more than just absorption. Then when meditation uh, reaches a stage, it come, becomes constant remembrance. And then there's trance. Trance means one is no longer on this level. One is somewhere else. One is in, in the consciousness of constant remembering of Krishna. So these are the five stages of remembrance, and that's called anushmiti. And then ultimately that is samadhi. And that is called Sampati Dasya, the perfection of life. Mm -hmm. And the perfection of life is actually our constitutional nature. To come to that stage is... So this is what this Krishna consciousness movement is about, bringing our consciousness into remembering Krishna 24 hours a day. <laughs> and when you're remembering Krishna 24 hours a day, you're with Krishna. We go in and out of consciousness now, or we go in and out of remembrance now. It's sporadic. When we come to these gatherings, you know, it intensifies. When we go back, immediately after we leave, we still have some residue of that intensification of being here with so many devotees and hearing. But gradually, as time goes on, it goes down again, because we get back into our old routines again. But the idea is not to fall back into the old routine again, but make a program for hearing. As we make a program for day-to-day -day life, make a program to hear. Make a program for constantly arranging your life in such a way that you can hear more and more. So, and of course it says if you can actually the next stage is to live in Vrindavan and to follow in the footsteps of an eternal associate of the Lord. Now, on this stage, this is the stage of Ashakti. 
which precedes the stage of bhava, which means loving affection for Krishna, then one can aspire to follow in the footsteps of an eternal associate of the Lord. So what does that mean? Is that Prabhupada explains that, that if you have a certain inclination towards Krishna in a certain way, either as Madhurya Ras or parental affection, Sakya Ras, or just service in general, you find a person, and Prabhupada lists this, some people, some of the eternal associates in this verse here, and then you take shelter of that person, and you serve that person in the mood of devotional service. And he says, just like he says here, it's actually spontaneous devotional service. When one becomes spontaneously engaged, and one aspires to be like Krishna's cows, or a stick, or a flute in the hand of Krishna, or the flowers around Krishna's neck. That's neutral ras. And dasya ras, one follows in the footsteps of servants like chitraka, patraka, araktak. In friendly ras, one becomes friends, becomes like a friend for Baladev, Sridam or Sudam, Vatsalya Ras, Madhya Nanda Maharaj, Madhurya Ras, Radharani, or one of her lady friends. Prabhupada says you can become like that. In other words, you can enter into that mood of an eternal associate of the Lord through, fa through chanting the holy names of the Lord constantly and reside, bringing the mind into Sri Vrindavan Dham, or pure devotional service. And then, of course, aspiring for an eternal associate of the Lord means that you focus on one of Krishna's eternal associates, you offer prayers to that associate, you, you glorify that associate, you read about them, you hear about their pastimes, you understand their relationship with Krishna, you learn everything about them, they become your guide, and they will direct you to you know, higher and higher stages of service. <laughs> and if you choose someone who's in a ras that you're not in, then that person will bring you to that other ras because they are eternally, you know, in knowledge, and they'll they'll guide you and also show you where you're supposed to be, like that. So that's recommended. We can even do that now. We can find an internal associate of the Lord and simply pray and hear about their wonderful qualities and, you know, take their mercy and pray that we, they can help us become more and more engaged in the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham. The, Shri, the mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham is the mood of uh, constant service to the Lord. That's what Vrindavan means. So if you're here in Slovenia or wherever you are, if you're engaged fully in service to the Lord, you're in Vrindavan. Vrindavan is not simply, not only a, spiritual, a location in the spiritual world, it's a state of consciousness. It's a state of consciousness. Lord Chaitanya would even say, my mind is in Vrindavan, although my body is not. <laughs> my mind is going mad. It wants to go to Vrindavan because it's always in Vrindavan, and it's always taking me to Sri Vrindavan down. So this is the process for entering into this stage of, uh, it's called Anushmiti. This is a very high stage, but by practicing the process of hearing more and more, we can do it. The problem in our ISKCON society is that we don't emphasize this enough. We do a lot of, because we're in the mode, we're still tinged by the mode of passion, we see success by how much we do. The mode of passion is gratification comes by results. I do something, something happens, I can feel a sense of accomplishment. The mode of goodness is the more of the mode of knowledge where I gain through purification of the heart or through acquisition of transcendental knowledge, not so much simply by doing things like that. And this whole Kali Yuga is all geared to just keep doing, right?
we were talking about people work so hard, and, and what do you get? You only get more work, that's all. Everyone is working, working, working. Of course, a devotee who is absorbed in his service, that's different. But still, one has to take sufficient time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And as one does that, one's attraction for that process will increase more and more like that. And then gradually one will come to the stage of, you know, just chanting or just like that. We can't do it now, but we can practice it. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. Prabhupada said the whole process of Krishna consciousness is simply practice. Practice chanting, practice serving, practice association, practice hearing more and more. Because all this practice is simply awakens our natural inclination for these things. It's, the soul simply wants to hear and glorify Krishna and serve Krishna. That's all. That's all the soul wants to do. <laughs> The soul doesn't sleep, the mind and body sleeps. The soul doesn't eat, the mind and body eats. <laughs> so we have to do all these things to maintain the body, but the soul, is, the soul or you, is finding your satisfaction through hearing and chanting and serving Krishna constantly like that. And then there's an unlimited sweet flow of nectar that comes We've all tasted that, right? You get it from time to time. You get it, and you're, you're absorbed in something spiritual, and you think, I hope it never ends. This bhajan is so nice. This kirtan is so nice. This prashadam is so nice. <laughs> it's also spiritual. <laughs> yes, and even that. So, this is the nature of transcendence that when once we connect to it, it's sweet. The previous verse showed us that because of our avidya, the sweet taste, although the object is sweet, the taste is bitter. So, as Prabhupada would explain, the cure for jaundice, which causes us to taste sweet things bitter, is something sweet, or sugar cane. So the cure for the lack of sweet taste is something sweet, or sugar cane. And therefore, you keep taking the sweet taste, although it's bitter in taste, it's actually sweet. And then gradually, as the disease reduces through the cure, the sweetness starts to come. So just keep chanting. <laughs> just keep chanting. Chant as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada would say, 16 rounds? When you're actually chanting the holy name, you'll say, why 16 rounds? Why not 16,000 rounds? <laughs> That's the nature of the soul. <laughs> it just, you know, and we, we connect sometimes like that when we get into our job and, and it just flows and we just think, oh, it's time to do something else, right? <laughs> but sometimes we just, just, Prabhupada said, just sometimes just, you got, you're just thinking, what should I do? Pick up your beads and just chant. Just chant for an hour, two hours, turn, or just start a kirtan with other devotees and chant. We can do that anytime. Or come together and discuss philosophy. Again, getting away from this idea that success means doing things, right? I did so much. <laughs> the mode of passion, the mode of ignorance is getting, the mode of Passion is doing, the mode of goodness is being. And the mode of transcendence is being Krishna conscious. <laughs> so we do things because they're actually service. They're not material, they're not in the modes. But again, when we come to the higher stage of Krishna consciousness, hearing and chanting of the glories of the Lord becomes our only focus. <laughs> becomes our only focus. So this is what this verse is about. It's a wonderful uh, explanation of the actual stage of attachment to Krishna. It means attachment to Krishna's name, attachment to Krishna's pl place of residence, Sri Goloka Vindav, attachment to Krishna's pure eternal associates, like that. 
So, practice. <clears throat> practice more and more. Like that. Yeah. Questions? The victory? Mm -hmm. We, you may not be able to recognize your constitutional position, but Prabhupada would say, put yourself under the care of an eternal associate of the Lord. <clears throat> Even if it's not connected with your eternal position, still find someone who you're attracted to. We're all attracted to one of Krishna's associates, one of his friends, one of the gopis, or even, you know, you know, Lord Chaitanya is Radha Krishna in the mood of a devotee. He's practicing Madhurya Ras. So we can take shelter and pray to these personalities and they will guide us. La Lalita Lalita has come in the form of Srup Damodar Goswami and Chaitanya Lila. So we see Lalita was very close to Lord Chaitanya because he's actually Lalita Gopi who's, who's there with Lord Chaitanya who's in the mood of Radharani. So you, if you study Gaur Lila, you'll see Krishna Lila within Gaur Lila. It's, it's non different. Ramananda Roy was Vishaka. <laughs> the two most intimate uh, gopis in relationship to Radharani and Krishna. And they were the most closest associates to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like that. Yeah. All, practically all of Lord Chaitanya's associates were manjaris or gopis. And practically all of Lord Nityananda's associates were cowherd boys, because he's Balaram. <laughs> He's Balaram, like that. So. so, no one can tell you who you should be attracted to. How do you know your internal mood? Prabhupada says, <clears throat> you see, I'll, I'll give you a little history. There, you, there was a process in Vaishnav culture when at a certain stage, your spiritual master would send you to another spiritual teacher who would teach you who you are in the spiritual world at a certain stage of your development. And in that, there is 11 characteristics. You learned out who your identity is, where you live in the spiritual world, what's your bodily color, what's your service, what's your group, what's your associates, uh, like that, what's your particular kind of dress. It's 11 stages. Now, <clears throat> That was being misused. People were surreptitiously or pretentiously coming to that stage of acting like an eternal associate, although they were not qualified. This is called the Sahajyas. And this became very prominent. <clears throat> so Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati stopped that whole process <clears throat> and didn't allow that to continue. And therefore, Prabhupada followed in his footsteps. So the process is still there. So when devotees ask Prabhupada, well, how can we find out our eternal relationship? Prabhupada says, when you're ready, the spiritual master will tell you. He'll come to you and actually deliver you your identity like that. So, but as you progress towards your spiritual life, you get a tendency for a particular type of mood of devotion. It happens internally, not externally. <clears throat> Just like <clears throat> there's a one, there was one statement in the Mahabharata where uh, one devotee was criticizing Bhima, the warrior, a big powerful warrior. He's a fighter, and he also likes to eat a lot. <laughs> He's called Vrikradar. Vrikradar means one who has the belly like a wolf. <laughs> 
and he was eating. So this person was saying, you know, Krishna, he's a devotee, and he just, you know, he's just, just like... And Krishna revealed to that person what is his internal mood. <clears throat> and it was understood that his internal mood, that in his heart, outside he's a big fighter, and he's, you know, battling on, on behalf of the Pandavas. In his heart, he's throwing flowers at Krishna's lotus feet constantly. So you can't see that, but that's his internal mood. So a devotee who reaches that stage, they're doing two things. Outside, they're acting in one way. Inside, there's that internal mood is actually starting to develop. Now, as that develops within you, you should only speak that to your spiritual master. Because if you speak it outside to other, others, you will lose it. You should never reveal that to anyone except those who are your confidential friends and who understand or mostly to your spiritual master like that and these internal things should never be and that way the spiritual master will tell you yes this is it or no you're just imagining it it's not like that <laughs> because sometimes people imagine that this is actually who they are and what they are and there was a thing that developed within our ISKCON society in America. It was called the Gopi Bhava Club. <laughs> yeah. Where many of the devotees were actually dressing up as gopis and, you know, having satsangs. There was 50 devotees in our movement that were doing that. And it was the one devotee was dressing up as a peacock. <laughs> and others were dressing up as gopis. Others were dressing up as... I don't know, others. And then there's a discussion where one senior devotee is telling Prabhupada, I said, stop this. This is pretentious. Because in the Shastras it says, you know, that at a certain stage your eternal mood does develop. But you can't surreptitiously or pretentiously just adopt it all of a sudden. It happens naturally through your pra through the practice this verse actually brings it about when you constantly start to hear and chant the glories of the Lord that internal mood starts to awaken in relationship to your service to Krishna and to the spiritual master so it's something you just can't pr you can't fake it <laughs> and people there's there's a class of people who try to make people think they're so advanced by acting like that but they are called sahajya. Sahajya means one who takes things cheaply. So, again, example of that is that if you have a diamond, a very valuable jewel, and you keep it in a dirty place, that means that's called sahajya. Doesn't know the value of something, therefore it doesn't know how to keep it. If you have something very valuable, you keep it in a very protected, clean, and safe place. So our internal mood is something very, very precious and cannot be just thrown around like this or like that. It, it's, it gradually comes by way of this uh, absorption in the process of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. But we can practice that now. We can practice that now. We can practice that more and more. And that way we're always you know, in the best possible consciousness. So we need to arrange our day in such a way that we have time for sufficient hearing and chanting like that. And Prabhupada writes, this is a, this is a very, uh, it's in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, Vi, uh, chapter 3, verse 206, I think, or 5. Prabhupada writes, See, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was living at the house of Advaita Charya, just before he went to Jagannath Puri to take sannyas, he stayed there. He met all his devotees at Navadvip for the last time. He stayed for a whole month just to give his darshan, especially to his mother who was in distress that he was leaving. And it's a beautiful, beautiful exchange. Now, what were they doing all day? They were hearing and chanting the glories of Krishna, and at night they were having kirtan. Every, that's all they would do. 
and the devotee and Sachi Mata was cooking for Lord Chaitanya and other devotees. So that was the whole thing. And now after one month, Lord Chaitanya decided to go on to Vrindavan, uh, to Jagannath Puri. This is just after he took sannyas. And, uh, you know, Advaita Charya started to follow him. He says, you can't leave. He said, I'm leaving. Now you can't leave. Please stay. Stay for three or five more days. The Lord agreed. The Lord turned around and came back and stayed for, for five more days. And, and Prabhupada writes, what they did was all day they hear and chant the glories of the Lord and every night they had kirtan. And Prabhupada said, we should adopt this program in all our temples. <laughs> he says, all day we discuss about Krishna and at night we have three hours of kirtan every night. In all, He says, this should be immediately adopted in all ISKCON centers. <laughs> that was written in the 70s. <laughs> How many of us are doing that? <laughs> That's what Prabhupada wanted. Three hours of kirtan all night. At one point, Giriraj Maharaj, I was there when he was saying, Prabhupada said we should chant, we should just chant all day. <laughs> but then after a while, the devotee said, well, you know, how can we do that, Prabhupada? It's just like we got so many things to do. Prabhupada said, all right, just have once a, once a week, you should just chant one day a week and just make that day just for kirtan. That was the concession like that. So yeah, uh, we're, we're very much work-oriented. We want to you know, do a lot of things. And that's all right. I mean, that's service. We want to spread Krishna's consciousness movement. We have buildings. We need to have you know, services done to the buildings. Devotees need to be taken care of. We have projects like that. But if, we've, if we neglect sufficient hearing and chanting we won't get we won't we'll miss out on this treasure house that is available so therefore we should practice this more and more individually and as in our own life and collectively as a, as a society like that fortunately it's it's developing more and more we're seeing it more collectively we need that taste <laughs> taste comes from hearing and chanting the glories of the lord if any, in, when, Bhakti, when Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati would be approached for people who have problems, he would say, are you chanting Hare Krishna? Well, I am, but not in, all right, that's the problem, just chant. Just keep chanting and all your problems will go away. <laughs> he would always recommend hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord to the solution to anybody's problem. <laughs> and that's really the answer. And he actually said, when he was asked, um, uh, well, how can we solve the problems in the world, some general statement, he said there's only one problem in the world. He said there's only one problem, lack of Krishna consciousness, that's all. <laughs> Krishna consciousness means to put Krishna in your consciousness. <laughs> that's all. We have the deities. When as soon as we see Mahaprabhu and his associates there, we're Krishna conscious. <laughs> Simply by looking at them, you have just attained the state of Krishna consciousness. <laughs> and when you see with love, then you have then you are actually on the highest stage of Krishna consciousness. So that's the whole process. Prabhupada has given us a formula where bring the Lord into your consciousness through various means. It's all about that. So this is what this verse is about. Yeah. Come to the stage of always remembering Krishna through always chanting his name. Uh, live in Vrindavan or develop a state of consciousness that is the prototype or the replica of Sri Vrindavan Dham and uh, associate with great souls like that. And this is the process of Krishna consciousness. Any other questions? I thought I saw another hand up. Yes, uh, Chan Madhurya Chandrika. Yeah, this is described in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita both. Well, 
No, Prabhupada explains. As you're chanting the holy names of the Lord, at one point, though, Krishna's forms will appear in your mind. It happens too, right? When you're chanting, all of a sudden, Krishna, it'll come into your mind. But when that becomes more, then through the, through the holy name, the forms appear, or the forms become realized, and then the next stage is then you start to understand Krishna's qualities. And then the highest stage is to be absorbed in Krishna's pastimes. But the holy name is the media for by which all of these stages develop. You can't do it in another sequence. It's all The holy name is the one that brings us all the way up to perfection and absorption in Krishna's pastimes like that. How did the Goswamis write all these books about Krishna's Leela? They were seeing the Leelas. They weren't just theoretically writing it. They were seeing it. It was like watching television. <laughs> They were, they were in the Leelas. They, see the, they saw themselves in the Leelas, and they saw the Leelas happening within their own hearts and minds. Transcendental vision. <laughs> so this, that stage of consciousness is, a, is available. <laughs> that's, that's perfection. Now, if you're absorbed in your service, that is also Vrindavan. To be absorbed in your service is also a state or a consciousness of Sri Vrindavan Dham. But we must accompany sufficient amounts of hearing and chanting along with our day-to-day -day service. If we don't, our service will actually become tiring after a while. It will start to get a little, what we say, routine. Then the, the holy name gives life to whatever else we do gives life to our discussions, gives life to our service, gives life to everything. The holy name's everything. Well, there's a one, does anybody have the Veda base? Available? Uh, yeah. Uh, go to Chaitanya Charitamrita and um, go to Adi Lila chapter 7 and look up verse 74. <laughs> so, Adi Lila 774. Read the verse if you can. <laughs> 774. It's such a wonderful verse. I'm just... It just gives you goosebumps. <laughs> <It's just laughs> yeah, give her the microphone. Yeah. Nice and nice and loud. Nama Vinu Keli Kale Nahin Ara Dharma. Sarva Mantra Sara Nama A Shastra Marma. Translation. In this, whole, in this age of Kali, there is no religious principle other than the chanting of the holy name, which is the essence of all Vedic hymns. This is the pur purport of all scriptures. There is no other religion in this age than chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram, Ram. That's the conclusion of all scriptures, and that is the declaration of all great acharyas. So, become attached to chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> Any other questions? And there's many verses that are similar to that, but that's kind of like a... that's what you might call a Paribhasa Sutra. A Paribhasa Sutra is that verse which establishes a principle where if there's any other thing contrary to that, then those, that has to be taken secondary. That is, Paribhasa Sutra means that's a fundamental principle where all other philosophical points are subordinate to that one. <laughs> 
because we read the scriptures and they're quite diverse and there's so many recommendations and activities. But a Paribhasa Sutra will establish a principle that overrides anything else and establishes it as the ultimate principle like that. Just like the Paribhasa Sutra in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is, who knows that verse? Third, first canto, third chapter, verse number 28 is the Paribhasa Sutra for Bhagavatam. Each scripture has a Paribhasa Sutra. Mm -hmm. One three twenty eight is the Paribhasa Sutra for Srimad Bhagavatam. Sometimes it's called Mahavakya. It's another statement. Yeah. One, first canto, third chapter, verse twenty-eight. <laughs> we have a microphone. Microphone. Bring me microphone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Whoever wants to read it, would be. You can read. Use the mic. Eta chamsa kala pumsa Krishna stu bhagavan swayam Indari vyakulam lokam Rindayanti yuge yuge All of the above mentioned incarnations are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions of the Lord. But Lord Sri Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. All of them appear on planets wherever there is disturbance created by the atheists. The Lord incarnates to protect the tastes. So this verse says that out of all the manifestations or incarnations, there's simply plenary portions and plenary portions of the original source, who is this Krishna. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That establishes the Paribhasa Sutra for Bhagavatam. Krishna is supreme, he is the original Godhead. All other manifestations are coming from him. They're not on the same level. He is the Adi Purush, like the Govindam Adi Purusham, Tamaham Bajami. Ishvara Paramakrishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarvakarnakarnam. This is the Paribhasa Sutra for Brahma Samhita, which establishes Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes, the original. You no, know, there's no one second to him. And he is Govinda. <laughs> he's also he's Govinda. So, so each Shastra has an outstanding verse which establishes the principle or the meaning of that, the purpose of that Shastra, like that. <laughs> so the holy name is the essence of all spiritual activities. <laughs> If you do everything else and you don't chant, you don't get much. In fact, you, get, you'll, you won't be able to continue. But if you chant, then everything else automatically has value and meaning like that. The Holy Name is everything. <clears throat> okay, anything else? Any other Kulmataji? Yes. Uh huh. To be, I mean, we need a qualification to become a kinesthetic, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. How to understand? Yeah, well, when you first come, you're practicing. And then when you start to engage in devotional service, then you start to fit in the categories. We're just... Um, Kanistatakari is one who's engaged in devotional service. We might come, do a little service, go home. But when you actually commit yourself to devotional service, then you fit, start to fit into these categories like that. And then there's certain symptoms for each of the 
types of devotees like that. So a kanist is on the lowest stage, but they're engaged in devotional service. Mm -hmm. like that. Now, there's people who practice devotional service outside who may have a kanistan mentality. It doesn't make them kanista adhikari. They, they indicate, they exhibit certain kanista attitudes. Or people outside may have a mudyaman characteristics or exhibited certain characteristics of a mudyaman adhikari. That doesn't make them a mudyaman adhikari. Only when one is fully engaged in the service in these categories, then, then it applies like that. So, <clears throat> you, when you first come, if you decide to start practicing regularly, you're just getting a feel. And then when you start commit, you're committing yourself to the association of devotees, and you start working under the guidance of a spiritual master, and then you start practicing devotional service like that. So the first stage, Rupa Goswami says, is the first stage in bhakti is Ado guva, Adao Guvastikam. And it's the first first regulative principles out of the 64 is take shelter of Krishna's representative. Now that's not initiation, it's aspiration. You're aspiring for, you know, devotional service under the guidance of Krishna's representative. That's, very, that's the stage number one like that. So in the meantime, we're just visiting and we're chanting and we're doing something, but we're just getting a feel. When you start committing yourself to someone's direction, then you start performing devotional service like that. Okay? Thank you. Nice question. Anything else? Prema Manjari? Did you? Prema Gopi? No, no. It's just... Oh. Oh, Sunday feast. <laughs> uh, so that's the cutoff time. Okay, that's well. We were planning on two thirty anyway. Okay, thank you very much. Chant the holy names. Be happy, and Sunday feast is coming. <laughs> Hare Krishna.